Are you looking for a quick and easy solution to run meta-analysis? Then follow along as I use the Comprehensive Meta-Analysis Software, or CMA, to generate high-resolution forest plots like this one in just a few minutes. You can download the software via my affiliate link in the video description, and if you use this code at checkout, you'll get a 20% discount. If you don't want to spend any money, there is also a free version that allows you to use all the features of the pro version for 10 days. In this video, I'll walk you through an example to show how you can enter data into CMA, run meta-analysis, estimate mean effect size, assess heterogeneity, and create publication-ready forest plots. I'll also briefly touch on advanced features like subgroup analysis, meta-regression analysis, and publication bias. Let's get started. First off, we need some data to work with. I'll be using this data set, which consists of 15 studies that report results for an intervention aimed at preventing alcohol abuse. If you're looking for the data, you can download the Excel file from the video description. Our data set includes information on the study name and three variables for both the intervention and the comparator. These variables are the mean treatment effect, standard deviation, and sample size. All these studies use slightly different outcome measures to assess alcohol abuse. For example, some studies recorded the number of drinks over a given time period, while others recorded the number of binge drinking episodes over a time period. We can account for that though, so let's get started by getting this data into the CMA software. Once I've opened up a blank CMA spreadsheet, the first thing I'm going to do is click on Insert, Column 4, and then click on Study Names. Next, I'll click on Insert again, Column 4, and this time I'll select Effect Size Data, which opens up a new wizard. In the wizard, I can click on Next, select the comparison of two groups, go to the Continuous Means, and from here I'm going to choose Mean, SD and Sample Size in each group and double click on it. Now your screen should look like this. From here, we can bring our data from our Excel file into CMA by simply copying it over, even with the table header included. Since I've copied the header too, I need to remove it by clicking anywhere in row one, then going to edit and then clicking on delete row. Next, we need to enter a value for the effect direction. We can simply set this to auto for each study as this tells the program to take the first means minus the second, which is appropriate since all studies use scales that work in the same direction. With that done, you can see that CMA has now automatically calculated a lot of outcomes for us, which are highlighted in yellow. That means we're ready to run our meta-analysis. Right now, our analysis includes a lot of outcomes that we're not necessarily interested in. So I'm going to start by customizing the display outcomes by right-clicking in any of the yellow columns. From this menu, I'm going to select Customize the Effect Size Display, which opens up this new wizard. Here, I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to select Hedges G as our primary index. Given the data we have, it makes sense to use Hedges G, which is a variation of the standardized mean difference, or SMD. The SMD is typically estimated using Cohen's D, and it helps to transform the outcomes for all studies to a common metric. Remember that all the studies in our sample use slightly different outcome measures to assess alcohol abuse, which is why we cannot use the raw difference in means. However, the SMD is subject to non-negligible bias for small sample sizes, and Hedges G removes this bias with a correction factor, which is why we're going to use it for our analysis. Second, I'm going to uncheck the boxes for standardized difference in means and difference in means so that we can focus on our primary index. Third and last, we can tick these boxes here to also show the standard error and variance in our plot. Now you can click OK and your screen should look something like this. Let's quickly save our file and then let's move on to the fun part, which is running the analysis. To run the analysis, all you need to do is click the button here and voila, you've got your results. Now that we ran the analysis, let's have a look at our results. One of the things you may notice is that by default, CMA uses a fixed effects model, which is appropriate when all studies are based on the same population and are identical in all material respects. In practice, however, this is rarely the case, as even studies which set out to do similar things may have substantial variability in design, population, and interventions. That's why in our case, a random effect model is the better choice, which we can switch to by clicking on this tab in the bottom left corner. 
Theoretically, we're now assuming that the studies in the analysis have been selected from a universe of studies that meet some criteria, whereby the effect sizes in these studies are from a random selection of the effect sizes in the universe. To make our universe a little bit bigger and to make sure that all our studies are displayed properly, looking at you, Butler, we can modify the scale of our forest plot to a range of minus two to two. More importantly, we want to get a better understanding of the dispersion that we're dealing with, which is the variability or spread of effect sizes across our included studies. We achieve this by sorting our hedges G column from low to high. Great, that's done. Next up, let's look at our mean effect size. Keep in mind that the studies we're summarizing have been coded so that a negative different means that the intervention reduces the amount of alcohol use. So does our intervention reduce alcohol consumption? The answer is yes, but only a little. Our mean effect size is minus 0.176, which can be a little hard to interpret given that we've calculated Hedges G. Here's a more practical interpretation. If we are looking at the number of pints of Guinness per week, and the standard deviation is five pints of Guinness, this would correspond to a decrease of around one pint of Guinness per week. Beyond the mean effect size, the CMA software also gives you all commonly used heterogeneity statistics like Q, I squared, tau, and tau squared. All these statistics aim to identify and quantify the variability in the effect sizes across studies in the meta-analysis. To get to these results, simply click on the button that says next table. I won't go into the detail here on how to interpret each of these statistics. Just be careful when using them as they can be a little bit tricky to interpret. To avoid mathematical pitfalls, you can check out the online guide on common mistakes in meta-analysis and how to avoid them. Apart from heterogeneity, you should also take a look at the study weights used for the meta-analysis to understand how much weight each study contributes to the mean effect size. If you click this button, the program displays the relative weight assigned to each study along with a bar graph on a scale of 0 to 100, corresponding to the percentage of the weight. Looking at the relative weight, we can see that our results are reasonably robust, given that the analysis is not driven by one or two studies, and the studies which are outliers have relatively little weight. This gives me enough confidence to proceed to the next stage where we create professional, high quality plots for our publication or report. Before we export our forest plot, let's customize it by using the built-in features included with CMA. You may have seen that peer-reviewed journals often like to visualize effect size in meta-analysis by using a box that reflects that study's weight in the analysis. And naturally, that's what we're going to do as well. To get that look, we need to hide the column for weight, which we can do by clicking this button. Next, you can right click on the statistics and select customize basic stats. Choose the columns you want to show and hit apply. You can further customize the forest plot to your liking by modifying the spacing, width, title and labels, as well as the footer of the plot. Once you're happy with your creation, click on file and then depending on your preference, you can either export to Word or PowerPoint. The CMA tool lets you create simple forest plots like this one with ease, but it also supports more complex analytical techniques. For example, you can run meta regression analysis to generate fancy looking plots like this one, which looks at study latitudes. This is where you can get really creative with your data. For example, why not check out other common covariates like publication year to better understand if there are any time trends in your data. On top of that, you can run both subgroup analysis and publication bias analysis, for which you can find dedicated, detailed tutorials on the official CMA website. With all these features, you can quickly run your next meta-analysis, estimate effect size, assess heterogeneity, and create publication-ready forest plots, all in just a few steps. Whether you're working on a research project or just exploring meta-analysis for the first time, CMA really provides you with a powerful yet intuitive way to analyze and visualize your data. If you found this tutorial helpful, then don't forget to check out the affiliate link in the video description for a 20% discount for both the software and the workshop. Or try the free trial to see if it's right for you. Get started today and take your meta-analysis skills to the next level.